in the sleepy town of Ravenswood. Nestled in the heart of the whispering woods, a legendary mansion loomed. Shrouded in mystery and terror, the once grand estate, now decaying and forsaken, was home to the enigmatic and reclusive Malcolm family. Rumors swirled about the family's dark past, of twisted secrets and unholy rituals performed within the mansion's walls. The townsfolk avoided the place, whispering tales of strange lights, disembodied screams and unexplained vanishings. One stormy night, a group of brave friends, seeking thrills and chills, decided to explore the mansion. They approached the entrance laughing and joking, but their merriment was short-lived. The massive wooden door creaked open by itself, beckoning them inside. As they ventured deeper, the air grew thick with malevolent energy. Portraits on the walls seemed to watch them, their eyes following every move. The group stumbled upon a hidden room, containing ancient artifacts and forbidden knowledge. Suddenly, the lights flickered and the friends were plunged into darkness. The whispers began, a chilling chorus of Malcolm family secrets and curses. The friends tried to flee, but the doors were sealed, trapping them. One by one, the friends vanished, never to be seen again. The last one remaining discovered a horrifying truth. The Malcolms had made a pact with an otherworldly force, trading their souls for eternal power. As the storm raged on, the friend realized they were next. The darkness closed in and the whispers became a deafening scream. The friend's own screams were drowned out by the thunder, and they became the latest victim of the mansion's dark legacy. The next morning, the police found only one clue, a cryptic message scrawled on the wall. In blood, the Malcolm's secret is safe forevermore. The mansion still stands, waiting for the next group of unsuspecting victims to dare enter its accursed halls. In the quiet town of Blackwood, there was an old abandoned house at the edge of a dense forest. For years, it stood as a grim reminder of a time long past, its windows boarded up and its roof sagging under the weight of neglect. One chilly autumn evening, a group of friends decided to explore the house on a dare. They arrived as twilight settled, their flashlights flickering against the encroaching darkness. The front door creaked open with an unsettling groan, revealing a musty, dust-choked interior. They split up to search the house. Sarah, the bravest of the group, ventured into the basement. The stairs led to a small, dimly lit room with walls covered in strange symbols and old photographs. One photo caught her eye, a family portrait of five, their faces eerily blank. As Sarah examined the photo, a cold breeze swept through the basement, making her shiver. She turned around and noticed a new addition to the room, a freshly drawn symbol on the floor, its lines smeared as if hastily sketched. Her flashlight flickered wildly. In the brief moments of darkness, she heard whispering voices, barely audible but insistent. They seemed to be calling her name. Sarah's heart raced. She tried to leave, but the basement door was now shut tight, as if unseen hands had sealed it. Panicked, she pounded on the door, yelling for her friends. Just then, the lights flickered on again. The whispers stopped. She saw a shadow move across the wall, a figure emerging from the darkness. It was the family from the photograph, their faces now twisted in malevolent grins. The figure pointed to the photograph, then to Sarah, its eyes hollow and hungry. She realized with horror that their faces had changed over time. Each one had once been a visitor to the house, their spirits now trapped forever. The door flew open, and Sarah bolted up the stairs, the chilling realization that she had become a part of the house's curse burning in her mind. Her friends found her outside, pale and shaking, but she couldn't explain what she had seen. That night, Sarah dreamt of the house and the figures trapped inside it. When she woke, she found a new photograph on her nightstand, her own face, blank and hollow, staring back at her. The halls of Ravenswood High School had been silent for decades, its classrooms and lockers left to gather dust. But on certain nights when the moon hung low in the sky, the sound of whispers and footsteps echoed through the empty corridors. It was said that the ghost of a former student, Emily, roamed the halls, searching for her lost love, Jake who had died in a tragic accident within the school's walls. Legend had it that if you were alone in the school at midnight, you could hear Emily's mournful cries and see her apparition, dressed in a tattered prom dress, wandering the deserted hallways. One stormy night, a group of brave teenagers decided to explore the abandoned school. 
laughing and joking as they made their way deeper into the building. But as the clock struck midnight, the atmosphere shifted. The wind howled, the lights flickered, and Emily's whispers grew louder. One by one, the teens began to vanish, pulled into the darkness by an unseen force. The last one remaining, Sarah, stumbled upon Emily's prom photo, hidden away in a dusty trophy case. As she gazed into Emily's eyes, the ghostly apparition materialized before her. Sarah tried to flee, but Emily's ethereal grasp held her in place. And then she saw Jake's ghostly form, standing beside Emily, his eyes black as coal. The star-crossed lover's eyes locked onto Sarah, and she felt an icy chill consume her. The next morning, police found Sarah's phone, lying on the floor with a single text message. They're still here. The school remains standing, a haunted monument to the tragic love story of Emily and Jake, forever trapped within its walls. As I lay in bed, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. It was a warm summer night, and the darkness outside seemed to press against my window like a physical presence. I tried to distract myself with TV, but the shows blurred together in a haze of static. Suddenly the room was bathed in an otherworldly glow. I felt a strange tingling sensation, like my molecules were being rearranged. I tried to scream, but my voice was frozen in my throat. A blinding light enveloped me, and I was lifted from my bed, weightless. I saw my room, my house, my neighborhood, receding into the distance. I was being pulled into the sky, towards a ship that hung like a silver crescent moon. I was on a table, surrounded by beings unlike anything I'd ever seen. They were tall, with skin like translucent glass, and eyes that burned with an inner fire. They prodded and examined me with instruments that seemed to defy explanation. One of them leaned in close, its eyes blazing with an unspeakable hunger. I felt my mind being torn open, my thoughts and memories ripped from my skull. I was consumed by a sense of utter helplessness. When I awoke, I was back in my bed, the room bathed in the pale light of dawn. It was as if the whole experience had been a dream, but I knew it wasn't. I knew I'd been taken, examined, and left to wonder if I'd ever be whole again. As I stumbled through the days that followed, I realized that something was inside me, watching and waiting. I could feel its presence, like a shadow in my mind, and I knew that I was no longer alone. The small town of Willow Creek was never the same after the night the clown came to town. At first, it was just a rumor, a whisper of a painted-on smile and eyes that glowed like embers in the dark. But then, the children started to disappear. At first, no one suspected a thing. The parents thought they were just out playing, but as the sun dipped below the horizon, the truth became clear. The children were gone, and in their place, a trail of colorful balloons and twisted, sinister grins. They called him Giggles, the clown with a heart blacker than coal. He'd appear in the dead of night, his eyes glowing with an otherworldly light, his smile twisted and cruel. He'd snatch the children from their beds, leaving behind only a trail of terror and a haunting, maniacal laugh. One stormy night, a group of brave teenagers decided to confront Giggles. They tracked him to an abandoned carnival on the outskirts of town, where the rickety booths and rusted Ferris wheel seemed to loom like skeletal fingers. As they entered the carnival, the lights flickered to life, and Giggles emerged from the shadows. His eyes blazed with a malevolent fury. His grin stretched across his face like a grotesque, painted-on scar. The teens tried to run, but Giggles was too quick. One by one, he snatched them, dragging them screaming into the darkness. The last one standing, a girl named Sarah, faced Giggles alone. She saw the evil in his eyes, the hunger that drove him to kill. And then everything went black. The next morning, the police found Sarah catatonic and alone, surrounded by balloons and the twisted, sinister grins of Giggles' victims. The clown was never found, but the legend of Giggles lived on, a cautionary tale of the horrors that lurked in the shadows, waiting to strike. And then everything went black. The next morning, the police found Sarah catatonic and alone, surrounded by balloons and the twisted, sinister grins of Giggles' victims. 
The clown was never found, but the legend of Giggles lived on, a cautionary tale of the horrors that lurked in the shadows, waiting to strike. The woods had always been a place of whispers and warnings, a place where locals avoided venturing, especially after dark. They called it Raven's Peak, a forest shrouded in an eternal gloom, where the trees seemed to twist and writhe like living things. A group of friends eager to debunk the myths decided to explore the woods, laughing and joking as they delved deeper into the forest. But as the sun dipped below the horizon, the atmosphere shifted. The trees seemed to close in, their branches tangling above like skeletal fingers. Strange noises echoed through the woods, twigs snapping, leaves rustling, and an unearthly whispering that seemed to come from all directions. The group quickened their pace, but the woods seemed to shift and twist, leading them deeper into the heart of Raven's Peak. One by one, the friends vanished, pulled into the darkness by an unseen force. The last one remaining, Emily, stumbled upon an ancient ruined cabin, hidden deep in the woods. Inside, she found evidence of a dark ritual, symbols etched into the walls, and a single glowing artifact that seemed to pulse with a malevolent life. As she turned to flee, the whispers coalesced into a single, chilling voice. You should not have come here. Emily tried to run, but the woods seemed to ensnare her, the trees closing in like a living trap. The next morning, search parties found Emily's car, abandoned at the edge of the woods, the engine still running, the headlights casting an eerie glow into the trees. But Emily was never seen again, and the woods remained, waiting for their next victim, their secrets and terrors hidden behind a veil of twisted branches and eternal darkness. As a child, Emma had always been afraid of the closet in her bedroom. She would try to convince herself it was just a normal closet, but the darkness within seemed to pulse with a life of its own. Her parents told her there was nothing to fear, but Emma knew better. One night as she lay in bed, she heard the creaks and groans of the old house settling, but then she heard something else, a faint scratching coming from the closet. Emma's heart raced as she threw off the covers and approached the closet door. She hesitated, her hand trembling as she reached for the handle. The scratching grew louder, more insistent. Emma flung open the door and a musty smell wafted out. At first she saw nothing but darkness, but then a pair of glowing eyes appeared, hovering in the shadows. Emma froze, paralyzed with fear. The eyes drew closer and she saw a twisted, elongated face with skin like decaying fabric, the creature emerged, its body a mass of writhing, pulsing tendrils. Emma tried to scream, but her voice was trapped in her throat. The creature loomed over her, its eyes burning with an otherworldly hunger. As the creature reached out to claim her, Emma's parents burst into the room, flicking on the light. The creature vanished, leaving behind only a faint whisper. I'll always be here, waiting. From that day on, Emma never looked at her closet the same way again. She knew that the creature was always there, waiting for its chance to strike. And when the lights went out and the darkness closed in, Emma knew she was not alone. In the depths of a dusty forgotten library, a young scholar named Sophia stumbled upon an ancient tome bound in black leather. The cover was adorned with strange symbols that seemed to shift and writhe in the dim light. Despite feeling an eerie unease, Sophia opened the book, releasing a whispery sigh that seemed to caress her skin. As she delved into the book's yellowed pages, Sophia discovered it was a diary written by a madman named Malister. His words spoke of dark rituals, forbidden knowledge, and an insatiable hunger for power. Sophia felt a creeping sense of dread, but her curiosity kept her enthralled. That night, Sophia began to experience vivid, disturbing dreams as if Malister's dark energy seeped into her mind. She saw visions of twisted creatures, burning cities, and an endless, abyssal void. The dreams grew more intense, and Sophia became convinced the book was cursed. Desperate to break the curse, Sophia sought out a local expert in the occult. He warned her that the book was a portal for malevolent entities, and that Malister's spirit was still trapped within its pages. Sophia knew she had to destroy the book, but as she tried to burn it, the flames refused to touch the cover. One fateful night, 
Sophia awoke to find Malister's ghostly form standing in her room, his eyes blazing with a malignant fury. The cursed book lay open on her chest, its pages whispering an otherworldly incantation. Sophia tried to scream, but her voice was silenced by some unseen force. As the darkness closed in, Sophia realized she had unleashed a horror beyond comprehension. The last thing she saw was Malister's twisted grin before the shadows consumed her, trapping her forever within the cursed book's abyssal pages.